Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this video. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a fix for this issue. And essentially, this issue is a big issue. Well, I wouldn't say a big issue, but if you have a crank no start issue, particularly with extreme weather patterns, with extreme temperature patterns, I mean, where it's like really hot out, really cold out, or it gets pretty warm out or pretty cold out and you start having these issues with either a crank no start or a sporadic crank no start or it happens during these uh, temperature uh, these extreme kind of extreme temperatures not very but yeah okay so um <clears throat> here's what all right um i had this situation with my vehicle um a couple of days ago the weather's gotten warmer out because uh it's it's uh i i guess this is summer is it is it summer is is it is, is the first day of summer started i don't know but the weather's gotten hot all right had some sporadic issues where um over the last couple of days it started it started up it cranked and then i tried a couple of times it started up and couple of days ago it would crank and um it, it it wouldn't start up regardless of um what i did so i'm gonna tell you guys what all right um if you guys went into this situation you guys are probably perplexed by it because well i was perplexed by it because um i changed the battery the strength the cranks were very very strong the cranks were, were very, very, very strong, and uh, I didn't think it was the battery because the battery was changed out a bit, about a year and a half ago. These batteries should last you anywhere from four years. It should last you up to about four years, or four or five years when you should change your battery, sometimes three to four years. But regardless, I didn't think it was the battery because it cranked it up really, really, really strong. So I was thinking to myself, you know what, I'm just going to cross that off the list as far as troubleshooting is concerned because essentially if you guys are in this situation, this is what you're going to do. You guys are going to go down the list of probably the easiest things you guys can fix to get yourselves out of the situation. And then you guys move on to uh, the stuff that you guys don't know about or you or you might need more tools to actually figure out etc etc so um battery is always my first thing uh when 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 these kind of situations come up you want to resolve that issue as far as crossing off the list of things to look for loose cables corroded uh corroded corroded terminals uh faulty batteries bad batteries etc etc that's crossed off the list okay it's very strong crank now if the cranks were not very strong i would actually consider the battery okay but the cranks were very strong throughout so i i must have tried to start at least four to five times put it in neutral try to start it it was very very uh all all, all five to six times where i tried to start it, it was very very strong so i i crossed out the battery as far as that's concerned now um um as far as the next step in the troubleshooting process i was thinking to myself it could be a variety of things okay the situation could be a variety of things it could be um fuses relays fuel pump it could be um any uh a sensor that is connected to um the the functioning of the engine the mass airflow sensor the crankshaft position sensor the camshaft position sensor the throttle body sensor uh, air temperature sensor all those things okay all those things but here's the thing about it as far as troubleshooting is concerned every single one of those things actually have a sensor connected to it if if for the most part okay if for the most part if you have any issues with any of these components any of these components with a sensor connected to it you probably get a check engine light now i didn't notice a check engine light on my vehicle um and uh haven't had a check engine light in a while but I always carry an OBD2 uh, scanner with me. And uh, what I did was I plugged in the OBD2 scanner. And I made sure. And, and I always want to, when, when, when troubleshooting the steps, I always, you always, you always, you always, anybody out there troubleshooting the steps, you always, you always want to go uh, as far as troubleshooting from the easiest fixes to the hardest fixes, okay? Because the easiest fixes, uh, sometimes sometimes we'll get you guys out of these situations as far as um you know time and money and 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 and, and frustration and stuff like that so 
So I put a scanner in. It's it was it was um, a twenty dollar scanner that I got from uh, from Walmart. And uh, I have a couple cars, and I have one of these in every one of my cars, just in case. Okay. I just want to rule all those things out. So I plugged it in, and uh, scanned it. It scanned all the way through. Zero codes. Um, all the all the monitors were complete, and monitors are essentially the the sensors. All the sensors were passed. All right. All the sensors passed. So um, at that point, um, I ruled out all the all the things that I listed: the mass airflow sensor, the camshaft, the crankshaft, uh, air temperature sensor, throttle body, a uh, throttle position sensor. All those things that could possibly cause uh, this kind of issue um, got checked off. Okay, um, that's what I did. So I, I okay. So that's um, I went and 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 the fact that it scanned all the way through with no codes um essentially means that i could probably check off the ecu um if it, if it scanned all the way through with like 11 codes or something like that i could probably say it was the ecu but it scanned all the way through with no code so it's not it's it's not the ecu crossed that off of this next on the troubleshooting all right i was thinking now, what could possibly cause a crank no start issue? And I was thinking to myself, you know what? There are certain things that could cause a crank no start issue that is could be easy to resolve. And uh, one of those things is a dead key fob battery. De a dead key fob battery or a very uh, a key fob battery that's, uh, that's almost dead will, will, will cause this situation. But here's the thing about it. Um, the doors locked and unlocked without any problems um everything as far as remote worked and i tested all, all, all of it out I, I pressed all the buttons everything on the remote works so uh, i'm going to assume that the battery is strong enough to operate uh to send out a signal to all those to the locks and unlocks and all that stuff uh, i'm going to assume that that's probably um, not a problem with the key fob battery now if you guys have in this situation, um, it could be your key fob battery. You might want to just try to uh, check that out. You might want to swap it out. But to tell, be honest with you, I, I swapped out the key fob battery um, uh, about seven months ago. And uh, those batteries should last you for a couple of years. It lasts, you know. Uh, so I, uh, I, 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 I kind of crossed that off the list, okay? So... At, at that point, it could either be a couple of things, and uh, it could be the it could be either a uh, a fuse, a relay uh, that's causing this issue of, of the fuel system, mainly the fuel pump. And I was thinking to myself, let me check out the fuse. I looked at the fuses. Now, couldn't determine if the fuses had any kind of um. Uh, they couldn't determine whether the fuses had any kind of, um, you know, were, were blown anything like that. And normally, when you check out the fuses, just from eyesight alone, you might want to, you know, you want to look to see whether there's any kind of, uh, whether the fuse is blown. You know, a lot of times you can look through these fuses. Most of the time, you can look through these fuses, and you know, you see whether the uh, the, the fuse itself is 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 disconnected or uh, whether there's a brownish. Uh, hue on the fuse burnt uh, hue on the fuse you can smell like it's burnt sometimes sometimes okay <clears throat> but it's very very difficult to uh check that out with 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 um uh just just from eyesight so there was um there was a uh a uh an auto zone nearby so i went to the auto zone i picked up a couple of things a fuse tester Picked up a fuse tester, checked out all the fuses. All the fuses were good. All right, there was no blown fuses. Um, at that point, I was thinking maybe it was the, a, a fuel pump. So I was thinking maybe I could just try to listen to the fuel pump and uh, try to listen to the fuel pump, uh, turn it to the on position, see if the fuel is. I was checking to see whether the fuel pump um, was, um, was priming. Now, priming is what happens when the fuel pump actually, when you turn it to an on position, actually the motor actually runs, sends out, uh, it pumps the fuel, the, the, the fuel to the uh, injectors, and you can actually hear the fuel pump running before it cranks and it starts up. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it. I couldn't figure it. So at that point, I was like, um, you know, out of those two situations, either the fuel pump or the or, or fuel pump relay, I was thinking, you know what? 
uh, if I had to take a guess at uh, whether the fuel pump it's a fuel pump or the fuel pump relay or 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 or, or just troubleshoot it to the to the point where um, I'm crossing my fingers um, one of the you know uh, the, the easiest of the two would be the fuel pump relay so I, I at that point I was like you know what let me uh, let me check out <clears throat> the uh, let me check out the the fuel pump relay and uh, and uh, if you guys don't know, um, in a lot of vehicles these days, uh, depending on what your vehicle is, and this is a common issue to a lot of vehicles, uh, there's a relay. There's a there's a relay called the PGMFI relay. Um, that relay is uh, in various vehicles. Some vehicles don't have them. Most vehicles just have a regular, just have a fuel pump relay. Other vehicles have a fuel pump uh, relay one. That's under the hood, and other vehicles have a fuel relay, fuel pump relay two, which is the PGMFI relay. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of times that relay could be under the hood, but sometimes it's under the um, glove box. Sometimes it's under the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 steering wheel uh, under that uh, area. And uh, essentially, that relay controls. It's an it's an off on off relay for the fuel pump, all right. Outside of the main the other relay for the fuel pump, this is the other relay for the fuel pump. And essentially, in a lot of vehicles, in a lot of vehicles, um, this relay has issues when the the temperature is either really hot or really cold, and apparently there's a defect in a lot of these relays where the temperature um, actually affects um, the relay itself or makes it uh, causes it to be faulty or causes it to be faulty when the uh, there's there's it, it's really cold or it's really hot may uh, a lot most of the time when it's really hot all right so I looked into uh, that relay and uh, thought about it. I could either A, get a tow, B, um, no, that, there wasn't a B as far as changing out the fuel pump is concerned. I didn't have the tools to do it. Um, and uh, C, changed out that relay and uh, hope that that relay is the cause of it because a lot of times, uh, you know, just changing out that relay could actually fix the problem. That relay would be the problem. So I was like, all right, uh, let me just change out the relay because that's the easiest of the, of, of, uh, that's the, that's the easiest to do. So went to AutoZone, got the, uh, uh, PGM FI relay and, uh, uh, took a little bit of time to swap it out, <clears throat> crossed my fingers, started and, uh, it cranked and guess what? It started. It started. All right. So if you guys have this problem and hopefully if you guys have this problem, it's uh, the fix as far as diagnosis is concerned is um, one of the fixes that I listed as far as the easier fixes were concerned. Definitely, if you guys went through all the diagnosis that I went through, definitely, you guys should definitely <clears throat> um, look at your PGM FI relay. Um, and, uh, hopefully that fix was as easy as yours. But if you guys have any of your own personal experiences with this, definitely leave a, a comment, a comment section. It could help somebody else out as far as, uh, you know, their, 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 their issues and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any uh, comments, definitely leave a, a comment in the comment section. Please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and all that good stuff. Uh, all right, guys, take care. Mm -hmm.